All right, great, we're live. <clears throat> it always seems to take twice. It always seems to take two tries, you guys. I don't know why, but I gotta start leaving uh, a couple minutes because, because it always takes like twice, two tries to get on here. As you're jumping on, say hello. Let me uh, do my little gig here. Hi, who's here? Say hi. Let me do my share. La 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 la. So let's get rich and buy each other homes in the south of France. Let's get rich and build everybody nice houses and teach them how to dance. Let's get rich and build a house on the mountain, making everybody look like ants. Way up there, you and I, you and I. I think I butchered those. Can't do two things at once. I think I'm buying people sweaters, not houses. Post. Okay. Good old Ingrid Michaelson. Remember the Ingrid Michaelson days? Who does? Hey Michelle, how are you? Good to see you here. Yeah, my faithful, faithful detoxer. Happy yellow flowers to you. These are for you this morning. I'm feeling, feeling, feeling funny on hump day. Okay. I, okay, I think we're good. So as you guys jump on, say hello. Let me know that you're here. This is my green smoothie gone purple for, with blueberries. And um, let's get started. Yeah, I do too. I don't know if, what this thing is other than decoration, but it's sitting here on the, on the uh, windowsill. <clears throat> it's cute, I think. And it, it like bounces back and forth. Okay, so, so if you're watching the replay, say hello, let me know in the comments below, replay love, thanks for watching, let me know where you're tuning in from, um, and I am Amanda, I'm your intuitive nutrition and energy coach, um, founder of Heisman Health, I help you eat intuitively and eat for energy so that you can use that energy to bring forth your passion in the world and to really build a life that you love. Uh, I also explore the spiritual and emotional sides of nourishment that go right along with eating more intuitively and getting back in touch with our beautiful bodies. Uh, I'm also a nutrition intuitive so I can channel the needs of a nourishment body. And as you're jumping on, say hello. I think I can see the comments. Sometimes I get off and it's like Facebook, um, filtered comments or something. I see like half of them or two thirds of them and then I get off and I see much more. So if that's the case while you're on here, um, I'm not ignoring you. It's uh, some sort of some sort of um, filter by Facebook, but just keep asking your questions if I don't see it or respond to it. And if and as always, if I don't see them, I'll come back in the comments uh, and answer them. Cool. So, we are doing a detox series. Last week we did energy building basics. This week we are talking about detoxing. And we're talking about detoxing in a really uh, simple tip each day, a simple thing to do each day to help the body's natural function of detox and cleanse, right? The body has a natural cleansing function, so we are supporting that. Um, we're not doing anything too crazy or extreme. What we're doing is supporting the ongoing cleansing that the body is always doing. So leading up to a more accelerated container of what we might call a detox or a cleanse that I am running next week. So next week I'm running a holistic detox starting the prep starts Monday, January 29th. The actual cleanse will start on Wednesday. So if you're like, oh my gosh, that's so uh, soon, I can't possibly get ready in time, don't worry, uh, because we do all the prep and the getting ready together for two days. So 
Detox tip number one and two were about infusing your water with different fruits um, to help your detox effort and uh, and green drinks and green smoothies we had we kind of delved deep yesterday right there were a lot of you on and we went a little deep today is all about it's a holistic detox tip it is about journaling so I want to talk about for a second as we look at the 360 view of health, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, how journaling can help our detox effort. Because what I see all too often is emotions getting stuck in certain places of the body, right? When we, when we don't allow ourselves to feel an emotion for whatever reason, we don't feel safe feeling it uh, in our relationship situation, or we, um, we, we just, we just don't want to, right? It's, a, it's something that feels painful and we just stuff it down. Anytime we stuff anything down, it's gonna build up toxicity, right? And it's going to become, if, if it stays there long enough, um, it's going to um, become stuck, right? In certain cells, organs, uh, somewhere internally in the body and that eventually can lead to illness, disease, stuff like that. So I see it a lot um, and writing and journaling is one of those ways to to kind of release stuck emotion or at least get in touch with what we are feeling sometimes we don't even know how we're feeling because we're busy we're going throughout the day we're accustomed to pushing things down and waiting till the end of the day to even feel things emotions are meant to be felt they're meant to be experienced right they're meant to come forth and and, and feel first like we like to think about them first like um is this like let, let justify them like is it it is this rational is it like we want to uh is it justified that i feel this emotion am i worthy to feel this emotion um is really what we're asking or sometimes we think that things like anger or something like that isn't a spiritual enough emotion to feel so we hop right over it saying i'm fine i'm fine right uh when really that emotion all it needs to do is flow through it needs to be acknowledged um it needs to be acknowledged and felt and then flow through uh and then it's it's gone it's released we release it with love we thank it for showing us whatever it is that we needed to see in that moment uh, and then it's gone and possibly we may need to forgive uh, that emotion if we have some judgment around it but w you see this with kids all the time right they do this naturally they can be like throwing a tantrum one minute and happy as clams the next right like just licking their lolly the next minute um, because that's the natural state is for they 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 feel that sadness or that pain or that grief or that emotion in whatever it was and there's no judgment around it because they haven't been taught to judge that emotion yet by society or whatever and their kids and then they feel it and then they move on so um, a lot of us who've lived some life right who have some decades behind us uh, have stuck emotion um, somewhere whether consciously or unconsciously um, or subconsciously right and it's an easy practice to get in the habit of just writing out first if if you are let me know if you're a journaler below because this seems to be a polarizing topic usually um, usually people are either journalers or they're not like love it or hate it sort of thing so let me know in the comments below if um, if you're if you love it or you don't if you're into it or you're not uh, first let me know that so I've been a journaler for quite some time um, even before you know um, people were selling prompted journals and uh, you know morning pages and stuff like that and really um, touting it I, I had several journals I had one I have one that's called a happy thoughts book that is exactly what it sounds like I put my happy thoughts in it so I can come back to it and read it I have a quotes book I have a dream journal I have a journal that is strictly for like writing the um, the junk out the mind chatter and that's a lot of what I'm talking about here right is is dumping that that like uh, mental dump that brain dump uh, is is a good first 
first uh, place to start because otherwise we're carrying these thoughts like it's kind of chaotic in there and it there is something really uh, comforting or something really comforting about seeing how we're feeling on paper it helps us name it it helps us go oh that's what's going on and if you don't know how you're feeling that's where you start is with the mental dump is just with the mind chatter that you wake up with or that you run throughout your day with the to-do list even whatever is coming to your mind you just you just write for like two three pages straight and then I promise you the the good stuff will start to surface and you'll start to see how you're feeling Michelle says I am an infrequent journaler yeah and I myself go in phases. I feel like, you know, there's times where I can really fill, fill journals and then there's weeks at a time where I don't do any journaling at all. And I think that just mirrors the phases of life that we're, we're going through. Joanna says, LOL, so not into journeying. journaling. I used to keep journals as a child, but had a hard time rem um, remembering to make journal, to make entries lately and then when I'm gonna look at my computer cuz it's easier to read and then I'd go back and read through it it'd be it would I would be so critical of myself and my thoughts so I stopped but I like the idea of being able to look back through my thoughts feelings experiences years later yeah so there's two schools of thought there there's like the the thought that you can like look back um, and see your growth which is great uh, and then there's another one where you um, Whatever, especially if it's something really critical for yourself, you write it out, you write it out of your body, and then you throw it out or you burn it or you do something like um, ceremonious with it. <laughs> you know, you do, you burn it to release it, you put it, like you throw it out, um, you know, you flush it, you do whatever. So, um, you know, I've done combinations of both because I'm like you, I like seeing where I came from. Sometimes, even if I, like, really just, you know, all the things that, that I, you know, we, our, our monkey mind, not just our monkey mind, but our inner critic, that inner mean girl, right, that's running in the back is saying, when I, like, uh, write that out and burn it, I might just make a note in my journal that I keep that I did that, that I had that ceremonious release. I love that idea of releasing it, how cathartic. Yeah, it really is. Um, and just, you know, like we have a space for a uh, bonfire here, but even if you don't, you can do something safely with like, um, you know, some like a piece of pottery and a little fire and you can do something really easily. So I really encourage you guys to try that. And if you need prompts, let me know. Um, there's tons of, um, you know, after you just write out the, the mind stuff, like what, whatever's running in the background, you're clear, right? You're clear for your day. You're, you're having clear thoughts about what's going on. And you'll be able to clearly name the emotions you're feeling. It doesn't feel like a big jumble uh, anymore. I spent years where it just felt like a big jumble. I didn't know how I was feeling. I couldn't name it. I, I, or I, or I was judging how I was feeling. So I, I, I um, really distanced myself from my emotions. There were years where I didn't cry. Now I cry at the drop of a hat. It's great. <laughs> Tears are just emo again emotions releasing in the body. So um, that's great. But even asking yourself like how I'm, how am I feeling physically? And then writing about it like how does my tummy feel how does my energy feel why do I think that is um, and if you think you're feeling if you feel like you're feeling an emotion isn't that funny that I that's that are that still that programming still came out of my mouth I still said if you think you're feeling um, if you feel angry like am like am I angry what about am I making my anger wrong am I stuffing it down how can I express my anger in a safe way that doesn't hurt anybody else right because you do need to express you know anger sadness grief everything um, happiness joy uh, everything in a way that doesn't um, in a way that doesn't hurt people you know you can do the classic punching of the pillow or or something like that but really like writing those feelings out is great we do this with food like 
am I actually hungry? What am I hungry for? Like what, uh, and, and this, and this is a question that opens up a lot, right? Like, what am I hungry for uh, to, to, to be in my life, right? More joy, more peace, stuff like that. What am I passionate about? What do I want to express? Do I need to look at my boundaries? Uh, do I need to feel or express something that I'm avoiding by covering up with food? Boundaries is a big one, right? Usually we're feeling something because... We've let, um, we haven't stood in our power or let somebody um, kind of cross our boundaries somewhere in some way, shape or form. And it may or may not have been communicated, um, but that's a big one with, with writing it out and seeing how you want to handle it. What questions do you guys have? <clears throat> awesome. So, yeah, as it just uh, bounced over. I don't know what that was. So that is today's. I want you guys to give it a go, see how it works for you, um, see what comes out, see what mind chatter plays out for you, um, and definitely try to get to the underlying emotion behind what's going on. Uh, behind what what you're writing there and um, this is all we do a lot of this together in the holistic detox uh, which is starting next Monday and I will drop the link with the entire description I went into it in a lot of detail in yesterday's live so I'm not going to go into it in a ton of detail today uh, but the holistic detox is great we have a um, we have a really supportive group of of women and men um, going through a detox together either you know the detox itself is three days with either five days of support or ten days of support so it's priced from 197 to 397 depending on the option that you get and we have had extraordinary results from that some where uh, not only in the physical but some people had toxic relationships detox out of their lives and different things um, detox out of their lives. So we do a lot of journaling uh, in that detox and you're supported in the emotional detox that inevitably comes up with the physical detox. This is primarily um, a cleanse, um, um, a colon cleanse, but we support all the organs and all the emotions. If someone has budget to do either the detox or the personal profile, oh, the personal power profile, um, power eating profile, like a new, that's a personal nutritional profile, which one do you think is best? That's going to be highly individual and depending on, um, <clears throat> I'm just feeling into your energy, Michelle. Let's talk, um, let's talk one-to-one, -one. like, uh, message me because this, uh, they're totally different, right? The, the nutrition profile is something that I create for you both with, um, with both sides of my training intuitively, uh, and formally, and, um, you get kind of a report to follow on your own. So they, you don't have, like, uh, support group there um, but you do get some really individual support the cleanse is very much a reset and the energy is very very good for this right now in the collective but I'd love to talk to you just really quickly over messenger and see what works best for you because that's going to be individual based on what's going on in someone's life right now does that make sense message me and um We'll do a quick, we'll do a quick review. All right, you guys, I will be back with holistic detox tip number four tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, and I can't wait to see you guys there. In the meantime, tell me how your journaling is going. Tell me how your infused water is going. Tell me how your green drinks, green smoothies, green juices are going. All right, either one is fine, Michelle. Either one is fine. I'll talk, I'll, I'll look right now. 
All right. Love you guys. Bye.